most cars still cost more to charge than to fill up. Did you realize that? A new study here we're reading about in, uh, let's see, that was done by Anderson Economic Group, compared the cost of to fuel a gas-powered car with the cost to charge an electric one. And what did they find out? That's what we're here to talk about today. This is an article here from, let's see who, Insider Magazine. And, you know, we've been talking about electric vehicles and how they compare to the current fleet of old-fashioned internal combustion ice dyno-fueled cars. And here they found that a big part of the electric car transition is cost parity with gas-powered vehicles, which we all know. And what we're looking forward to, finding out. While charging and fueling trucks cost the same, other cars and their electric counterparts differ. That was another finding. And it's not yet cheaper to charge some electric cars than to fuel them with gas, according to the study. So that's what this is about. Stay tuned. We're going to go through this article and dive in. And then at the end, we're going to have a conversation about this, about electric vehicles, and about the transition that we're supposedly under and uh, what's fueling it, pardon the pun, and uh, whether we want to continue down this road without doing some other more important things first before trying to go to electric vehicles for everybody on the road. Check out our other videos if you are curious about what we've been talking about. You can find those here along the way. They say it's not yet cheaper to charge many electric cars than it would be to fuel their gas-powered counterparts with gas, according to the study. The cost of filling up a gas station or at a gas station versus plugging in, and whether those two match up, largely depends on the segment and price. A study from the Anderson Economic Group suggests published earlier uh, in August. I believe it was published late in July. So let's continue and then we'll continue to discuss. Trucks cost about the same to fuel and charge while entry and mid-level cars and SUVs cost more to charge at home and in public than they do to fuel at a gas station, according to the study. Luxury cars and SUVs fall somewhere in the middle. The study was based on the latest information on gas and residential electricity prices, commercial charging prices, tax rates on fuel and electric cars, fuel economy details, and more to compare the cost of fueling versus charging for 100 miles of driving. Unlike some of other studies that simply compare gas and electricity costs, the AEG study amortized other costs. So this is important because you want to bring in the whole picture. So the amortized other costs like charging installation and EV registration fees as part of the cost of home charging as well as deadhead miles. What's that? Time spent driving to and waiting at a station. Check out our other videos where we've been watching that at the local charging station. So they take it, all those into account as a, as a cost part of commercial charging. Of course, gas prices can fluctuate and electricity costs vary widely by region depending on how it is produced. Check out our videos about that as well. We've got some good ones about nuclear, nuclear power generating uh, installations. Cost parity between electric vehicles and internal combustion engine cars is largely lacking. That is, EVs are generally more expensive with an average transaction price of $53,438 in June, according to Kelly Blue Book. 
than gas cars, averaging 48,808. So 53,000 versus 48,000, roughly. Reaching cost parity is going to be a crucial part of boosting EV adoption, and that's what we are looking forward to understanding here when we get into this conversation because too much of it is just talking about climate change or <clears throat> um, carbon footprint and not going any deeper to understand the economics of it, which are really going to be what drives the transition. So EVs are generally, uh, let's see, we already read that. So cost parity is crucial and it's improving, but that's not the end of the story. How much it costs to fuel versus charge vehicles is something consumers are taking into consideration too. Here's how the costs break down by segment. For trucks, for trucks, it roughly costs the same to fuel and charge. So there you go, that's a good sign. Whether you're fueling a Ford F-Series, a Ram 1500, or Chevrolet Silverado, it costs about $17.58 for every 100 miles. Trucks that take diesel cost about $17.58 and 10 cents to fuel for the same mileage. If you have a Rivian R1T or GMC Hummer, the cost to charge at home isn't much different. It's about $17.70 per 100 miles. The cost to charge, however, skyrockets 48% to about $26.38 if a driver is mostly charging in public. So this is home versus public. So public, it, char it costs, what, $9 more per 100 miles. Entry-level cars. Here we go. Entry-level cars and SUVs. If a driver owns a Nissan Versa, Hyundai Elantra, or Kia Forte, it, it's set to cost them about $9.78 in gas for every 100 miles. But switch to a Nissan Leaf or a Chevrolet Bolt, and that increases to about $12.55 in home charging expenses. Head to a commercial charger, and a driver is looking at nearly $16. That's 64% more than if you had stuck with a gas-powered car in the same segment. Let's go on to luxury cars and SUVs. The luxury segment is interesting in that it actually might cost less to go electric. And this points to your Model S folks. As long as you plug in at home. It costs about $17.56 for every 100 miles for a gas powered Lexus ES, a Porsche Macan, Mercedes-Benz GLE, or a similar vehicle. The Porsche Taycan, or Taycan, Tesla Model X and Model S and Mercedes-Benz EQS may cost about $13.50 if you're juicing up in your garage, saving you about 23%. But if you drive one of these EVs and you mostly use public charging, you're back to square one, paying about $17.81 per 100 miles. So. There you go for those. Now let's go on to mid-level cars and SUVs. It's not looking too good, but it's looking better, right? If you think so, fill it in the comments and also make sure you give me a thumbs up here on this and subscribe so you can get in on the conversation later. For now, drivers will probably pay more to charge their Ford Mustang Mach-E, their Kia EV6 or your Volkswagen ID4 than to fuel their internal combustion engine counterparts like the Chevrolet Equinox, the Nissan Altima, or Subaru Outback. Charging any of these vehicles at home will run about $12.62 per 100 miles, while fueling it one at a gas station may run about $11.08. That difference, while not incredibly substantial, may add up. 
And when these drivers go to a public charging station, they're likely to pay about $16.10 per 100 miles, still more than the $12.62. So there you have it. It's not looking like we're achieving cost parity with electric vehicles versus your gas powered dino juice vehicles, but it's getting better and I'm assuming it will get better, but the real key is, and as you've heard us talk about in this station before, or in this channel before, um, what are we doing about the infrastructure to make sure that we can handle all of the new electric vehicle charging facilities around the country and at homes and whatnot? Because even though your grid in your area might be built up to the level to handle all the new electric vehicles in your um, region. There are rural areas and other places like this that are not going to go electric very quickly because the range for one and or the lack thereof of range and the lack of infrastructure for the electric grid. So you also have to look into how we're producing power. We're going to a lot more renewables which is a great thing and it's accelerating and that is good too, but the uh, key here is to look at our base load power generating capacity, which is gonna be key for uh, making sure the grid is at the level that we need it to be for electric vehicles. And the key there would be installation of nuclear, probably small modular reactor, new generation power plants which are going to give us the base load power generating capacity that's going to be able to handle all this new um, demand. So if you agree, great. Fill it in the comments, let me know. If you disagree, of course, let me know in the comments as well because we want to know what you think about electric vehicles, the transition, and even old style vehicles are you afraid to go to electric vehicles? Are you afraid to stay with ICE vehicles because the climate change is happening? In any case, we'll see you next time here on Driving at Home.